Hello everyone, this is Rohit Sonia again with a new educational video and today's topic is from class 10th and the name of the chapter is Triumph of Surgery by James Harriet. Before going through the chapter, let us know the theme. So the chapter shows how excess of everything is bad. Anything that is in excess is not good for us. Second thing that the chapter shows is that overindulgence can be harmful. Any type of feeling, if that feeling is in excess, it is harmful. It is about a dog who is spoiled, who is ruined, whose health is deteriorated by its overindulgent mistress. The mistress proved to be overindulgent. She loved that dog a lot and gave a lot of things to eat. That's why the dog became unhealthy. Now let's know about the main characters. So the first and main character is Tricky. Tricky is a pet dog which is spoiled by its owner. And the owner is Mrs. Pumphrey. Tricky is greedy and loved food as most of the dogs love. Tricky doesn't like exercise and it has become fat and sick and all happen because of its mistress. And the second character is Mrs. Pumphrey, the mistress of that dog. She is a wealthy woman. She loves her dog a lot. She loves it like her child. She is an overindulgent mistress. The excess love that she gives to that dog. She pampers her pet like a spoiled child. That's how the child has become spoiled. She is an impractical lady. Because she does not know how much love she had to show her over that dog. And the next character is James Harriet, the author of the piece. He is a veterinary doctor in Yorkshire, England. He is the author of this chapter, lesson. He is a kind and compassionate person. He shows practical wisdom and sensibility because he knew that the dog is not well because of the lady's habit to feed the dog a lot. He treats the dog without medicine and surgery and this shows that how much practical Mr. James Hadith was. Now let's know about the story of this chapter. In the beginning we are told that the author was shocked to see the poor health of Tricky. Tricky his condition was not good because he was overfed and he was unable to walk properly that time. Mrs. Pumphrey, the mistress, told him, told the author about all the things she would give to Tricky. She told that she would give a lot of things so that his condition would improve. But it was not happening. Mr. Harriet understood the cause of Tricky's condition. He knew that his condition was because of the mistress. He warned her to cut short its diet, otherwise it would be really ill. So he told the lady that he would be ill if he is not given much exercise or if his meal is not cut short. She agreed to what Mr. Harriet said with a heavy heart she agreed. It was not easy for her. And we know that it was not easy for that lady to cut short the diet of that dog. Why? Because she was overindulgent. After some days, she called Mr. Harriet, telling about the dog's poor health. And after some days, she again called uh, Mr. Harriet and told that the dog was not feeling well. He told that it would have to be hospitalized. Then Mr. Harriet said, because he knew that the lady is not going to improve herself, she would carry on giving the dog a lot of things to eat. That's why he thought of a plan to hospitalize that dog. 
He took away the dog, leaving Mrs. Pumphrey in sorrow. He took away the dog from Mrs. Pumphrey, and Mrs. Pumphrey was really very sad that day. It was given plenty of water and kept on a strict diet. And when the doctor had taken the dog to himself, so he was trying to improve the health. So he did not give him much to eat. He gave only water initially and he also kept strict diet on to him. It was left with all other dogs and uh, the doctor also put him among all other dogs. Soon it started playing with them and doing physical exercise. Soon his health became well. She kept phoning to know about Ricky's health and she was really worried about her dog. She could not live without that dog. That's why she kept on. She continued to phone to the doctor to know about the health of Ricky. One day, the writer informed that it was recovering. As soon as she knew that the dog was recovering, she started sending lots of eggs, wine, brandy for the dog's health. But the writer and his assistants did not give eggs, wine, brandy, whatever was brought for the dog. They did not give all those things to the dog. On the contrary, they ate everything by themselves. Tricky had changed into a healthy and an agile dog. Now, Tricky, earlier, which was very fat and uh, very lazy, now his health has improved. She was called to take the dog back because now the dog was healthy. Mrs. Pumphrey was called to take the dog back. She was very happy and exclaimed. She was very happy that day when she came there to collect the dog. She exclaimed that it was a triumph of surgery. So this was the chapter. Now we'll read the whole chapter. Triumph of surgery. Triumph is victory. Surgery, a place where doctors work. So here we will read how the surgery became victorious. Let us read the chapter. I was really worried about Ricky this time. I, I stood for Mr. Harriet. Mr. Harriet was really worried about Ricky that time. I had pulled up my car when I saw him in the street with his mistress and I was shocked at his appearance. When he, when Mr. Harriet saw the dog and when he saw the condition of that dog, he was really shocked and he stopped that car. And now he is going to tell what his condition was. He had become hugely fat, hugely very much, like a bloated sausage with a leg at each corner. His eyes bloodshot and roomy, stared straight ahead and his tongue lolled from his jaws. So this was his condition. His body was very fat like swollen sauces, sauces and eatable. And uh, his eyes were red, roomy, watery and the dog was staring straight ahead. And the tongue of that dog was moving out from his jaws, dropped out from his jaws. So this was the condition and that condition was not good. Mrs. Pumphrey hastened to explain and she quickly explained. He was so listless, listless without energy. Mr. Harriet, he seemed to have no energy. I thought he must be suffering from malnutrition. So I have been giving him some little extras between meals to build him up. Some malt and cod liver oil and a bowl of horlicks at night to make him sleep. Nothing much really. So this is how she is going to spoil that dog. She told Mr. Haddard that she thought that his condition is not good, the condition of dog is not good and she just added something extra to the dog's meal. And what she added? Some malt, some cold liver oil 
ball of horlicks and this was extra to its meal and did you cut down on the sweet things as i told you and then mr harriet asked the lady because uh, mr harriet earlier warned her to cut down to cut short the diet of that dog so mr harriet is asking whether she had done it whether she had cut short or cut down the diet of that dog oh i did for a bit but he seemed to be so weak i had to relent he does love cream cakes and chocolate so i cannot bear to refuse him so this is how she was indulgent because the doctor advised that lady to cut down the meal but she did not do why because the dog seemed so weak to her and she had to relent relent she had to become less severe she could not become strict to that dog because she was over indulgent and she knew that the dog loved uh, cream cream cakes and uh, chocolate so she could not bear she could not tolerate she could not accept to refuse the dog and that is the reason why we could say that she was over indulgent i looked down again at the little dog that was the trouble tricky's only fault was greed he had never been known to refuse food he would tackle a meal at any hour of the day or night and i wondered about all the things mrs pomfrey had not mentioned so now the writer knew what was the trouble or what was the problem with tricky and tricky's problem his weakness is its greed tricky could not say no to food whenever at any time of the day whenever he was offered meal he could not say no the dog did not deny and the writer was thinking the writer was wondering about all those things that mrs uh, pomfrey had not mentioned mrs pomfrey would give the dog a lot of things to do so many things she had mentioned and sh- and uh, so many things are there that she had not mentioned are you giving him plenty of exercise and then the doctor asked the lady if she had been giving exercise to that dog well he has his little walks with me as you can see but uh, the gardener has been down with lumbago so there has been no ring throwing lately so the dog was not doing much exercise that time he was having only little walks and who was appointed for the dog to take him to exercise he was hoskin he was the gardener and those days he was suffering from back pain lumbago that's why he was not there with the dog and he could not take the dog to ring throwing lately recently i try to sound severe now i really mean this if you don't cut his food right down and give him more exercise he is going to be really ill you must harden your heart and keep him on a very strict diet now the doctor knew that it was really very serious thing that's why he had to become strict and now he said strictly and what he said that he was serious that time and mrs pumphrey had to cut short the food right down from that day onwards and give him more exercise and she had to give more exercise to that dog he is going to be really ill and if she was not going to do that thing the dog will really be ill and he also told the lady that she should be hard hearted somewhat strict so that the health of the dog will be improved she had to give strict diet to that dog mrs pumphrey wrung her hands oh i will mr harriet 
I am sure you are right, but it is so difficult, so very difficult. She set off, head down, along the road as if determined to put the new regime into practice immediately. Now, Mrs. Pumphrey, her condition is not good. She was wringing her hands. She was rubbing, she was twisting her hands. Why? Because she was nervous. Why was she nervous? Because she could not cut short the diet. And now she knew that she had to do so. Oh, she decided and she promised the doctor that she would cut short the diet. I'm sure you are right. But she accepted that uh, it was really difficult for her. So very difficult for her to cut short the food. She set off and this saying, she went away from there, head down, drooping her head. Why? Because uh, she was thinking hard along the road she was moving. And now she was looking as if she was determined that she would put this new rule into practice immediately because she wanted that the condition of the dog would be improved. I was their progress with growing concern. Tricky was tottering along in his little tweed cart. He had a whole wardrobe of these coats for the cold weather and a raincoat for the wet days. He struggled on, drooping in his harness. I thought it wouldn't be long before I heard from Mrs. Pumphrey. Now, as Mrs. Pumphrey was moving off, the writer was looking at them with growing concern. He was really concerned. So, this is the correct doctor that he was really concerned about Tricky. Tricky was tottering along, tottering along, walking in an unsteady manner. He was walking in an unsteady manner because uh, the dog was not feeling well. And he was wearing tweed cord, tweed, woolen cord, and he had got so many cords. His wardrobe, his Almira is full of uh, such types of cords, and woolen cords are uh, for the cold weather. And he had got rain cords also that uh, are worn in wet days. He struggled on. He was tottering along. He was not moving easily. His Head was drooping downwards in his harness. Harness, the rope that was tied round his neck. I thought it wouldn't be long. And then the narrator thought that Mrs. Pumphrey would soon call him. It would not be long before I heard her. Means Mrs. Pumphrey would soon call him. And the expected call came within a few days. And she also called him. Mrs. Pumphrey was distraught, distraught, worried. She was worried Tricky wouldn't eat nothing. The dog stopped eating and refused even his uh, favorite dishes. And besides, he had bouts of vomiting and he also had fits of vomiting. He spent all his time lying on rug, panting, gasping, gasping, just to breathe while your mouth open. Didn't want to go for walks. Didn't want to do anything. So this was the condition that the lady had put the dog in. I had made my plans in advance because he knew that the lady would call him. That's why he had his plans in advance. The only way was to get Tricky out of the house. For a period, I suggested that he be hospitalized for about a fortnight to be kept under observation. So he just made his point clear that the dog should be kept out of his house and should be kept under observation. The poor lady almost swooned, fainted. She almost uh, out of her senses because she could not think living without that dog. This is how much love she would do to that dog. She was sure he would pine and die. She was sure that uh, the dog would miss her a lot and the dog would die without that lady. 
if he did not see her every day because she knew that the dog also loved her much and the dog could not live without that lady but i took a firm line tricky was very ill and this was the only way to save him in fact i thought it best to take him without delay and followed by mrs pumphrey's wailings i marched out to the car carrying the little dog wrapped in a blanket but i took a firm line but this time he was really determined he knew that this is really very serious condition and tricky would not improve itself until it was out of that house so tricky was very ill that time and this was the only way to save that creature and uh, he thought that he should take that dog as soon as possible so he took that dog away and mrs pumphrey started to cry and despite the cries he took that dog and he came out of the house to his car with the dog wrapped in a blanket into his hands the entire staff was roused and maids rushed in and out bringing his day bed his night bed favorite cushions toys and rubber rings breakfast bowls lunch bowls supper bowl realizing that my car would never hold all the stuff i started to drive away as i moved off mrs pumphrey with a despairing cry threw an armful of the little coats through the window i looked in the mirror before i turned the corner of the drive everybody was in tears so this paragraph shows how much comfort they have uh, put that dog in and this comfort had ruined that dog so he was given so many things and when the doctor was there in his car and he was going away with uh, with tricky so they decided to put everything that belonged to the dog into the car and the servants the maids they all just went into the house and uh, came out with so many things that belonged to tricky and uh, what did they give into the car uh, were his bed his day bed his night bed his cushions his rubber rings his bowls so many bowls were there and when uh, the doctor thought that uh, the car could not have all those things he just started the engine but the lady was running along the car and she had put so many more things there into the car and as the doctor was driving away and when he was to turn he saw back and he, and he saw that everyone was in tears everyone was crying and weeping out on the road i glanced down at the pathetic little animal gasping on the seat by my side i patted the head and tricky made a brave effort to wag his tail poor old lad i said you have a kick in you but i think i know a cure for you out on the road and now he was driving and while driving he saw he glanced he saw the pathetic little animal he saw tricky who is in miserable condition and he was gasping because he could not breathe easily on the seat he was gasping he was sitting by his side and he patted the doctor patted the head of uh, tricky he tapped the head of tricky and uh, then tricky also showed some action he wagged his uh, tail he moved his tail and the doctor said that he was really a poor person a poor creature and he said that he haven't or he hadn't a kick in him it means he was not having any impact of anything 
there was no improvement there was no effect on to his health even there was no good effect on to his health but i think i know a cure for you but the doctor but the narrator knew that there was a cure there was a remedy for him and he had already thought of that remedy at the surgery the household dogs surged round me tricky looked down at the noisy pack with dull eyes and when put down lay motionless on the carpet the other dogs after sniffing round him for a few seconds decided he was an uninteresting object and ignored him so the writer was really fond of dogs he had got so many dogs in his surgery so when he took tricky there to his surgery so every each and every dog gathered round the doctor and those noisy pack were there and tricky was looking at those noisy pack and when the doctor put tricky down tricky did not show any action he was sitting there motionless onto the carpet and the all the dogs came there gathered round him they sniffed him and thought that uh, tricky was not any interesting thing and they ignored him and went away i made up a bed for him in a warm loose box next to the one where the other dog slept for two days i kept an eye on him giving him no food but plenty of water at the end of the second day he started to show some interest in his surroundings and on the third he began to whimper when he heard the dogs in the yard here the writer decided to put tricky among all those dogs so he had made a new place there a box a loose box he had put tricky in and uh, he also kept an eye on him he also observed him he did not give him many things to eat only water he was given at the end of second day he started to show some interest in his surrounding and uh, on the third day his whimpering his cry could be heard when he heard the dogs in the yard when he heard the dogs in the yard he also started to make sound he, he also started to whimper when he opened the door tricky trotted out and was immediately engulfed by joe the greyhound and his friends so now as he remained there for two days in that box and when the box was opened tricky came out and when he showed some interest in his surrounding so all the dogs including joe and joe was a grey hound all the dogs gathered round him after rolling him and all the dogs rolled him over and thoroughly inspecting him they inspected him the dogs moved off and this was the habit of uh, dogs whenever they see any another dog they do the same thing they try to roll them and they try to inspect them they try to sniff them the dogs moved off and then the dogs moved off down the garden they went to the garden tricky followed them and now tricky was showing some interest he followed the uh, all those dogs rolling slightly with his surplus fat because he could not run easily so he uh, it seemed as if he was rolling there later that day i was present at feeding time now it was feeding time and earlier he was not given any meal there with all those dogs but that day he was given meal with all those uh, dogs but when it was the feeding time i watched while tristan tristan the assistant of the doctor he slopped the food he put the food into the bowls there was the usual headlong rush headlong in a hurry every dog was in a hurry when food is served to them rush followed by the sound of high speed eating and uh, when dogs reached to their bowls they try to eat meal in a speed and then the sound could be heard the sound of eating speedily 
could be heard every dog knew that and why would those dog eat in a very hasty manner because they knew that if any one of them fall behind or fell behind the others he was liable he was responsible to have some competition for the last part of his meal so every dog knew that if they are slow to eat their own part so other dogs would take their part first and then would come to that dog also who is very slow and they would share his meal as well that's why the sound of uh, eating hastily could be heard there because every dog wanted to eat his meal first and then take the share of other dog as well when they had finished tricky took a walk around the shining bowls licking casually inside one or two of them next day an extra bowl was put out for him and i was pleased to see him jostling his way towards it when all of them had finished their meal they had uh, licked the bowls they had uh, put the bowls shining there tricky came there started to lick uh, one or two bowls there and that day the narrator knew that tricky was having hunger now tricky was really eager to eat next day an extra bowl was also put there for tricky and he was pleased and the narrator was pleased to see that tricky was pushing his way to the meal he was trying to push other dogs and want to eat his own share from then on his progress was rapid he had no medicinal treatment of any kind but all day he ran about with the dogs joining in their friendly scrimmages he discovered the joys of being bowled over trampled on and squashed every few minutes he became an accepted member of the gang an unlikely silky little object among the shaggy crew fighting like a tiger for his share at meal times and hunting rats in the old hen house at night he had never had such a time in his life now in this paragraph it is shown how he enjoyed with all those dogs and after showing some improvement what actions he started to do with other dogs so he did not have any medicinal treatment it was not given any medicine but now he was improving and he was joining with other dogs in their fights and other dogs would also bowled him over bowled over knock over him they tramped him they trampled him they run over him and they squashed him they crushed him every few minutes but he enjoys it he had joys of uh, having all those treatments he became accepted member now the gang of those dogs have accepted they had accepted him he was not like uh, them he was an unlikely figure among them why he was uh, unlikely figure because he was looking very beautiful he was looking good uh, he was silky uh, small and silky object he was and rest of the dogs they are shaggy okay and that little silky object he fight like a tiger with them for uh, its own share at meal time and uh, it also went out with other dogs uh, to hunt rats and where would they hunt rats in the old hen house at night so he would enjoy those days there all the while and the days when tricky was there mrs pomfrey we know mrs pomfrey's uh, condition was not good because uh, she could not live without that dog so she hovered anxiously in the background ringing a dozen times a day for the latest bulletins news i dozed the questions about whether 
his cushions were being turned regularly or his correct coat worn according to the weather but i was able to tell her that the little fellow was out of danger and convalescing rapidly so every now and then mrs pumphrey would call him and uh, uh, even she called him a dozen times a day and she just asked about how he was uh, taking care of that dog and whether he was giving everything in a proper time to the dog and uh, he did not take care of uh, all those things the doctor would not uh, take care of all those things he would not even listen to that lady carefully but he was able to tell only one thing to her and uh, the thing is that the condition of the dog is recovering the dog was recovering the word convalescing seemed to do something to mrs pumphrey she started to bring round fresh eggs two dozen at a time to build up tricky's strength for a happy period my partners and i had two eggs each for breakfast but when the bottles of wine began to arrive the real possibilities of the situation began to dawn on the household so when the narrator told mrs pumphrey that uh, he was recovering the word convalescing it affected mrs pumphrey a lot and she was very happy and now she thought uh, that she sh- uh, that uh, she should give something to the dog and she started to send so many things and what many things were there fresh eggs two dozen at a time and uh, after that bottles of wine also she started to send them and all those things were enjoyed by the doctor and his partner it was to enrich tricky's blood lunch became a ceremonial occasion with two glasses of wine before and several during the meal and uh, it was to enrich tricky's blood in order to uh, enrich the blood of tricky the wine was sent there but the wine was also enjoyed by the doctor and his companions we could hardly believe it when the brandy came to put a final edge on tricky's constitution and then he could not believe that she also had uh, sent brandy and brandy was really very expensive liquor and she also sent brandy the doctor could not believe it for a few nights the fine spirit was rolled around inhaled and reverently drunk and that brandy they had enjoyed that brandy for some days they would take that brandy at nights and for some nights they had enjoyed it there were days of deep content satisfaction they were really satisfied uh, with their lives because so many things are coming there to them starting well with an extra egg in the morning improved and sustained by midday wine and finish in a luxurious way round the fire with the brandy so they would enjoy all those things they would enjoy eggs in the morning wine midday and uh, in the evening they would have or at night they would have brandy so it was really very luxurious life that the doctor and his companions were living it was a temptation to keep tricky on as a permanent guest but i knew mrs pumphrey was suffering and uh, after a fortnight felt compelled to phone and tell her that the little dog had recovered and was awaiting collection it was a temptation to keep tricky it was really tempting for them it was really enticing for them to keep tricky as their guest why because they were having luxurious life because of tricky but i knew mrs pumphrey but the narrator was really of a very kind heart he knew the condition of uh, mrs pumphrey that's why he called mrs pumphrey that uh, uh, tricky was good he was recovered and uh, she could take tricky away from there within minutes about 30 feet of gleaming black metal drew up outside the surgery the chauffeur opened the door and i could just make out the figure of mrs pumphrey almost lost in the interior her hands were tightly clasped in front of her her lips trembled 
Oh, Mr. Harriet, do tell me the truth. Is he really better? So as soon as he phoned Mrs. Pumphrey, she was so eager that she did not wait for long and she came there as fast as possible. So within a minute, she was there. Their car drew up. Her car stopped there outside the surgery and uh, the driver, chauffeur, the driver, he opened the door and uh, the narrator could see Mrs. Pumphrey there in the interior of the car and she was nervous. Her hands were tightly clasped in front of her. She was holding, she was wringing her hands, her lips trembled and she said something. And what she said, she asked Mr. Harriet to tell the truth. And she asked if uh, the dog was really better. Yes, he is fine. There's no need for you to get out of the car. I'll go and fetch him. And the doctor replied that uh, the dog was fine. And he also made her remain in the car. He said that uh, the doctor himself would bring the dog to her. And why is he doing so? Because he did not want to show the lady in what condition he had put the dog, that the dog was living among so many shaggy dogs, dirty dogs. That's why he did not want to let Mrs. Pumphrey enter the surgery. I walked through the house into the garden. A mass of dogs was hurtling round and round the lawn and in their midst, ears flapping, tail waving, was the little golden figure of Tricky. In two weeks, he had been transformed into a lithe, hard-muscled animal. He was keeping up well with the pack, stretching out in great bounds, his chest almost brushing the ground. So, this paragraph shows how much change had been brought there into Tricky. So now, when he went there to fetch the dog, he saw that Tricky was there among all those dogs hurtling, hurtling, moving in an uncontrolled manner. He was playing with those dogs, his ears flapping, his tail waving, and he was having golden figure. And now what transformation was there? Now he had become lithe, thin, nimble, muscled, or hard muscled. And now he was keeping up. He is not very far behind those dogs. He is keeping up well with all those uh, pack of dogs. He was stretching out in great bounds. He was jumping. He was jumping uh, there with all those dogs. And his chest was uh, almost brushing the ground. So he was looking very nice. This paragraph shows the meeting of uh, both Mrs. Pumphrey and Tricky. After so many days, I carried him back along the passes to the front of the house. The chauffeur was still holding the car door open and when Tricky saw his mistress, he took off from my arms in a tremendous leap and sailed into Mrs. Pumphrey's lap. She gave a startle, ooh, and then had to defend herself as he swam over her, licking her face and barking. This was the meeting of them. So he uh, was there out of the lap of uh, the doctor and uh, gave a tremendous leap, jump, huge, enormous jump. And now he was there into the lap of Mrs. Pumphrey. Mrs. Pumphrey startled a bit and uh, she exclaimed, ooh. And then she had to defend herself as he swarmed over. He occupied, he almost attacked her, licking her face and barking. Both of them were really happy to see each other. During the excitement, I helped the chauffeur to bring out the beds, toys, cushions, coats and bowls, none of which had been used. He had not used uh, anything and he had put all those things back into the car. As the car moved away, Mrs. Pomfrey leant out of the window. Tears shone in her eyes, her lips trembled. This was the condition of Mrs. Pumphrey meeting that dog. Tears were there, shining in the eyes of that lady, and her lips were trembling. 
trembling because she was uh, full of thankfulness. Oh, Mr. Harriet, she cried, how can I ever thank you? This is a triumph of surgery. So she is showing gratitude towards uh, Mr. Harriet. And she said that it was uh, really a triumph of surgery. So this was really a very emotional and thought-provoking chapter, having a good moral note. So what the message is? The message is that love for our pets should not be expressed by pampering them too much because excess of uh, anything is bad. That's why. The pet should be taken care of with sufficient food, healthy environment and protection. There should be nothing excess to those pets. We should give healthy environment and protection to those dogs, but not overindulgence. Excess of everything is bad. We should always be sensible in dealing with the situations of life, as Mr. Harriet would do. So thank you for watching the video patiently. I hope you have understood the topic well. So like and share the video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you with a new video on a new topic. Till then, bye.